Hi guys, welcome to episode 8 of Exploring Codependency. It's not who you are. This week we're going to talk about, or on this episode we're going to talk about loneliness. And there's two types of loneliness that people emerging out of codependency face. And the first one is called pathological loneliness. This is an internalized state of self-isolation. It deals with the attachment problem we talked about a few episodes ago, along with the profound impact that isolation emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually create for us. So pathological loneliness is the internalized sense that I am truly alone. Like there is nobody else within me, with me. Um, it's a it's a state of separation from our inner self. A lot of people call that the inner child. Reunifying that connection restores a sense of belonging within us that brings a warmth and a comfort and a centering back to us. Because you know, fundamentally, codependency is about living life through somebody else's eyes in order to get love, right? Because it's a coping mechanism for love neglect. We, we automatically do that by associating our identity through someone else's eyes. And so when that person leaves or is gone or the relationship ends um, or they die, things like that, we lose, we feel like we lose a part of ourselves because now we don't have access to that reference point about who we are. That creates or results in that pathological loneliness because we really never had it through our parents or through our caregivers. We were attacked, we were diminished, and we were neglected. So instead of building a solid sense of attachment and an identity about ourselves through positive and honest reflection from the parent, we internalize their toxic responses as a definition of who we are. And then by nature, we discarded ourselves. We pushed ourselves away. And so that creates that separation where that loneliness comes in. The way we start to heal pathological loneliness is through a meditative or mindfulness-based practice reconnecting with our emotions. Because the inner self, its language is going to be emotions. It's going to be the sensations in our body. Reconnecting with that with love, or at least at a minimum honesty and non-judgment, allows us to start to fill in that space of loneliness. Okay? So we've got this internalized loneliness beginning to heal. Now we're going to deal with what's called relational or situational loneliness. So in codependency, we tend to confuse our people-pleasing, our fixing, our caretaking, our controlling, or our avoiding or enabling habits with connection. We think that, oh, I'm connected to that person because I'm making them feel better about themselves. So when we stop doing those behaviors and start opening up to genuine free flow, of connection, which is acknowledgement and attention that's freely given to us and that we can ask for and we may or may not receive, when we open up to that kind of connection, we're going to feel really lonely. We're going to feel really isolated because our purpose and our identity is no longer being fed through the actions of the codependent habits. This is our opportunity to begin to really come to know other people and ourselves by exploring real connection, genuine connection. And what this looks like is we're sharing things we like. We get into play again. We get to go out there and, and develop real friendships that aren't based on their drama and their feelings or our needs, but on play and on mutual interests and on lightness and fondness for each other a warm, positive regard for the other person and they have that for us. This is one of the most healthy and nourishing ways to break out of loneliness is to build playful relationships and friendships with other people. Now when I say relationship, I'm not saying a romantic relationship. 
because this is one thing a lot of codependents do. They they end up alone, they feel lonely, and so they fill that loneliness with a relationship. They go out, they find somebody, the person's paying attention to them. Oh, we're feeling love bond, we're feeling great, everything's good. Now we we give up ourselves to invest into them, but the loneliness is gone. Now we've probably inherited the same problem we had left previously. So I recommend if you're on your first steps of your journey out of codependency, out of isolation emotionally, you do not get into a romantic relationship. I urge you, I implore you to develop safe platonic friendships first. Build a support network that's playful and that has proven itself invested in you. Now that can be a big, big task because, I mean, great, Marshall, I'll go out and make friends. Like, I know how to do that. Right? It's like, I'll just go out and make a friend. Now, that does require us to do some deeper work. It requires us to understand what trust is, how it looks, how it feels. It helps. It requires us to start observing people and asking an extremely important question of, how do they fit me? This goes back to the previous episode when we are talking about attraction, right? And even how uh, the role of rejection plays in codependency. We're coming back to how do they fit me? We're not asking the question of how I fit them because that'll put us into our codependent mode like that. So eliminating loneliness starts with getting comfortable in our own presence and to begin building a positive, warm regard with ourselves. We enjoy our own beingness, our own company. And then we expand from there to build healthy, playful relationships and friendships with other people. And that becomes our primary circle of interaction. These are people we can rely on for support, but we have a dominance towards play, and interesting things and and platonic involvement and as we build into those relationships and we learn how they work and we build close uh, platonic bonds with other individuals then we can start looking at the world of romantic relationships we can address the aspects of building a strong fundamental coupleship with another individual but it all starts with us first We've got to come to terms with the emotions we have, reconnect with them using whatever processes you might use. I use a mindfulness-based set of tools that involve regulation, holding, uh, meditation, compassion, and then um, love, praise and appreciation for who we are and for our emotions. So, and then we can reconnect with other people, build friendships out, and and launch into the world from a place of love for ourselves. So if you've got questions about this, just reach out to me. Now, if you're ready to make the leap from codependency to thriving, just click the link below for the foundation course and get enrolled today. It'll set you up with everything you need to be able to work this out, to go deep, to eliminate your resistance to loneliness, and then build a container in which to hold for loneliness. You make space for it and then you get to discover who you are beyond that and build radical friendships that you can rely on and that they can rely on you rather than for what you do but for who you are. Okay, So that's just one aspect of foundation. It takes you through um, eliminating the fear of rejection, healing the narcissistic abuse, mm -hmm. understanding who you are beyond the codependent habits, helps you reconnect with your innate power, your personal autonomy, your ability to discover and change the world. And it blossoms you into knowing who you are. It gives you the tools to manage your emotions, how to regulate anxiety, how to move through depression, how to embrace joy and happiness, and how to move through difficulty. It's a powerful course, and that's just a portion of it. So it also teaches you your boundaries, how to execute them, how to choose yourself first, how to know what you want, that's a biggie, how to say no and not feel guilty about it, how to handle other people's disappointment and not have to change yourself or feel guilty or shame about it. It's just another aspect of that program. Additionally, 
There's a link below to the compassion meditation that is part, that is a part of the foundation. I want to see what it does for you. It's a powerful tool that will help you begin to feel and integrate more compassion in how you respond to you. So I invite you to click on those things. If you have questions, just post them below. And uh, we'll see you in the next episode, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.